first. No, no, dear. no. The commotion all began in Talbot County around 3 this afternoon after Maryland State Police say a man went into this Talbot Bank on Tillman Island and robbed it. With only one road in the area, state police set up barricades and began searching car by car to make sure the robber wasn't trying to make a getaway. There were three cop cars in the middle of the road just like checking and looking in everybody's window. It kind of makes me nervous, but I feel like it's such a secure area. They were looking for the person and that, that's basically all he said to me, which was kind of unsettling because obviously there's only one way in and one way out. A reverse 911 was also sent out to everyone in the area, warning them of what was going on. The bank in Tillman was recently held up by a white male. He is approximately five foot six inches tall, wearing a dark colored sweatshirt and dark mirrored sunglasses. He is driving a dark short bed pickup truck, possibly gray. Do not approach as he is armed and dangerous. Michelle Lewis of St. Michael's says she got one of those messages at her home. I have a lot of outbuildings and I just was worried about Obviously, he someone like himself coming on the property. It's scary, that's for sure. Maryland State Police later towed away this gray pickup truck at a home in St. Michael's, although police are not saying if this truck was used in the Talbot County bank robbery on Tillman Island. It's the sound they've been waiting for. Baby oysters being placed inside their cages. This is, is a great project for Phillips Wharf Environmental Center. It's getting us uh, involved in the community. Carol McCullough is at the center of launching a new program called Tillman Islanders Grow Oysters. People who live in the area have requested a certain number of cages to hang off a dock in their yard. Those cages have baby oysters inside of them. The plan is for them to be raised until they're adults, then place them on an oyster sanctuary in nearby Harris Creek sometime next spring. And then they can grow up and be mommy and daddy oysters and make more. So far, 183 cages have been requested. Today, the cages and the baby oysters arrived from Horn Point to be given to homeowners. I'm interested in it and I want to find out more about it. And therefore, I've taken on uh, eight cages. And the work is minimal. Phillips Wharf Environmental Center asks that every two weeks the cages be pulled out of the water so all the silt that's formed can be shaken off. Just that little effort you're kind of adding towards like the bigger picture and hopefully helping the bay out. Snow. 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 It makes me have to get up a little earlier in the morning to uh, make sure the snow's cleared for everybody and get to work. It ain't too heavy this time. Not too deep like it was um, last year. It's actually kind of powdery and a little wet underneath, so that makes everything a lot easier. There's nothing froze underneath, which is good. I guess I was in here about a little after 9 this morning. Since 7 o'clock this morning? 9, 9.30. Started in Dover Neck, been out to Wishing Well, been out to Elliott's, and three or four houses up and down the street here. We hit a whole lot of houses. Get about, about what is this, a seventh one, going on the eighth one. And after that, we probably go on in, eat some soup. This is the last one I'm doing. Nice and light. So it shouldn't to me if people have any heart attacks. Especially not me, hopefully. Snow. 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 As the sun came up on a crisp and clear September morning, Many people were busy getting ready for their day ahead. For those of us who lived through it, September 11, 2001 is a day we will never forget. But for these young faces at Greensboro Elementary School, it's a part of history that they can only learn about. Some of them know bits and pieces already. Family members dying and planes crashing. The day that the planes crashed into Twin Towers and they blew them up. Some have heard about that day from family. It means to me that the planes crashed into the two Twin Towers and how many people died. Others from television. It means that the terrorists attacked the Twin Towers and um, people started to jump out windows and the buildings collapsed. But these fourth graders are also learning about the 9-11 attacks from their teacher, 
Tamara Bowers. I think I kind of wrote the book out of pride for the country, and I wanted to instill that in the students that I teach. Bowers wrote a children's book shortly after September 11th called The World Will Never Forget. It gives the details of that day in a way a child would understand. We want to present them with the facts, and sometimes the facts are a little bit much, but we can bring it down to their level. She would read the book to her class every year, but now it has become much more than that. The book has been published, and Bauer's words have been brought to life through illustrations. It's very humbling, really. Caroline County resident Renee Buschel illustrated the book using her artistic ability. It took her a little over a month to come up with the 33 images inside the book, a process that Buschel says at times was reliving. Of course, I wanted to go back and look at media pictures of the day that it happened and how I could translate it onto a page that wouldn't be too scary. It was a moment in our history that we captured and I thought it was really important to teach kids about that historic day. A day that will now live on for these students and others across the country thanks to a teacher who is remembering a piece of the past for future generations. Americans will never forget as the sun came up on a crisp and clear September morning.